everybody out there in internet land. I am Travis Berardi coming to you from my apartment here in Ontario. Uh, just wanted to break down some playoff ratings, what everybody has to do to get in, what everybody has to do to get one playoff home game, to get two playoff home games, things like that. So we're going to do a little playoff talk. Anybody that is on here on Facebook or YouTube, hello. Thanks for tuning in this evening. Hope your day has been good. It's been great weather outside. I was down at one of the practices, and weather couldn't have been any better. But if you have any questions about what teams you guys think uh, you want to know about, just put a comment on the Facebook or the YouTube comment section, and I will try and break things down for you because, uh, yeah, a lot of numbers that have to go into this, and... Thanks to Joe Idle. Got to give him a shout out too before we, re, we really start doing everything. He was able to, despite all the COVID cancellations and everything like that, he was able to still get his playoff rating system out there. And he even has the ratings to where you can see how many points people are going to get through week 10 and everything like that. So it's helped me out a lot in trying to figure out what's going on. So we'll start, we'll get into things right now. Also, Paul Butterman, nice to see you. Thanks for the shout out. But let's get started and move to Division Three, Region 10. Mansfield Senior sitting right now in third. They should, well, they will get a home game. They will get one home game right now. Has They have a very good chance of giving a second home game despite playing Madison, who they have... No wins they will get for second-level points. Despite that, numbers four and five, Buckeye and Rocky River will play each other. So one team's not going get, to gonna get a lot of those bonus points and would need a lot of help to jump Mansfield Senior. And then at number six, the only other team that could jump them for a home spot, Rocky River, or I mean Padua Franciscan, they just had their game canceled. So they are done. All they can get is second-level points which really helps out Mansfield Senior. So if the Tigers can get a win against Madison, a payback from last year's loss, and get a couple other teams, maybe a Lexington win against River Valley, uh, an, either Ashland or Worcester, they're playing each other, so they will get bonus points out of that. It just depends. If Worcester wins, they get the level two bonus, the Division two bonus points, which is just a little bit better than Ashland's. And then a couple others. If Hoover can win, they're seven and two. Marion Harding can get a win. Those bonus points are going to help Mansfield Senior out just to solidify that top four spot. So it's looking good for the Mansfield Senior Tigers to get not one but two home games at Arlen Field, which is you know a great, great atmosphere. They had the new lights, everything put in. So that's going to look very, very good for them. Sean, yeah, Mansfield Senior, they're going to. They're most likely going to get two home games unless a lot of stuff happens. Uh, moving down, River Valley, they're playing Lexington. They control their own destiny right now. If they win, they're pretty much in. They're going to need help, though, to get a home game. It actually isn't likely that they're going to get a home game because even the teams ahead of them, even if they lose, their average points are high enough that River Valley can't jump them. They would need something major to happen for them to get that. But no matter what, River Valley pretty much in, but a win against Lexington would get them in. As for Lexington and Ashland, you see them down lower here in the bracket. Let me switch back to 310 right there. Ashington and Lexington are sitting in 17th and 18th. They're just outside of the top 16. Ashland takes on Worcester. If they beat Worcester, they're going to get a lot of points out of that, and it should vault them into the top 16 with help. Now, there's one team, Cleveland Central Catholic, that they aren't going to get a lot of points with their win. They're sitting in 14th right now. If they, Even if they win and Ashland wins, Ashland should jump them for that number 16 spot. Copley and Revere sitting at 15th and 16th. They play... Very good teams. Copley plays an 8-1 Highland team in Division II. Not the Highland Scots that we know, but Medina Highland. Lexington, they got 5-4. and four. River Value sits ahead of them. So both of those teams uh, could jump. Richfield Revere, 16th. They play a 7-2 Aurora team out of Division Three. If they can knock off 
If Revere or Copley both lose, then that really helps out Ashland and Lexington to jump up there, but both teams need to get wins to get in. So that should be it with the Division Three brackets. Anybody else with any questions, I can jump back as well. Come back here in a little bit. How you doing, Benjamin? Enjoying my enjoying my Wednesday. Uh, Aaron Morris, Centerberg. We will get to Centerberg here in a little bit. We're going to get to Division Six here momentarily, so we'll get to, back to that. But let's move to right now to Division Four, Region Fourteen where Shelby and Clear Fork, as well as Galleon, they all sit in this area. They all have a chance of making it as well. This Clear Fork-Shelby game, it should be a play-in to get that number eight seed. They're both sitting at nine and ten right now. They're both on the road for the first round at this moment. But if Shelby can get the win, they're going to get more bonus points than what Clear Fork would get. Shelby would get, I would think most likely they would get either eight or seven but they would need a little bit of help. Sandusky Perkins sitting in eighth right now. They take on Sandusky, who's sitting at three and six. So those division three points would help them out. Also a Lutheran West team at number seven. They play a five and four Harvey squad. So those are kind of winnable games for these guys, but Shelby could get a ton of bonus points and Clear Fork as well. But right now, Shelby sitting a little bit more prettier than Clear Fork with their current average at 15.7. They could actually get it up with a win to 20 or 21. If they can get it more close to 21, those secondary points by teams that they have beaten getting wins. They beat a Madison team I don't think is going to get a win. If Lexington can get their win against River Valley, they've beaten both of those teams, so they will get bonus points out of that. If Galleon can pull off a victory at Pleasant, it's doable. They can get bonus points there. They've beaten both of those squads. If Ontario can somehow knock off Marion Harding, those are major bonus points not only for the Shelby Whippets, but for the Lexington Minutemen back in Division Three. As for Clear Fork, they would need a few teams ahead of them to lose. They knock off Shelby and get a tie in the MOAC championship. That would move them up at least to around that ninth spot. But if they can get Rocky River, Lutheran West, and Sandusky Perkins to fall, maybe they can get in. I don't think it's going to happen. It looks like Clear Fork is going to sit just outside at 8 or 9. So we will see about that. Clear Fork and Shelby, however, they are in. So that's it, they're in. It's just where are they going to finish? They need some seating purposes. Bellevue, they're in Region 14. Brian, yes, sitting right there at Region 14. They're on the top. They're topped. Uh, right now, it doesn't matter. They've pretty much clinched the top seed. They've already clinched the top four seed. If they were to lose this game and everybody that they've beaten would lose, they would probably tie Van Wert for the top spot. So Bellevue right now, they are the number one seed, and they're going to be in. They're, they're in, they're getting two home games, and it looks like they're going to have a very good path to at least a regional semifinal. Give me one second. We have a guest coming in here shortly, so getting that set up as well. Oh. Speaking of the devil, there he is. So let's pull this man in. The man, the myth, the legend. Let me get my headset on as well. And the guy that signs my checks. None other than Brian Skaronsky. How are you doing today, sir? Let me make sure you're... Audio is on here, Brian. There's the man. Not getting any audio levels for that. Ah, audio levels from you right now, Brian. chance of moving up with some upset victories we'll see about that here coming up shortly galleon right now at 14th 
I think if they win, they're in. But like I said, there, there was a situation a couple years ago with Crestview. They were in the same situation Galleon is right now. But a couple teams behind them upset higher-ranked teams, and it jumped Crestview to knock them out of the playoffs. If things go like they should, if things are chalk, then yes, they will get into the playoffs. But right now, it's a wait and see. Galleon, just take care of business and then wait and see. So there we go with Division 4, Region 14. Moving on now to Division 6, Region 22. Wow, 35 people watching. That's it's quite it's quite something. Appreciate everybody watching this evening. Anyway, going to Region 22 out of Division 6. Looking at Crestview. They're the number two squad. They had a big victory against St. Paul that you saw live and free right here on the OH report. They sit right now the number two spot. They've clinched one home game. A win would pretty much clinch a second home game due to the fact that the fifth team, Liberty Center, their max average if they win is still less than the max average Crestview would get if they won and then did not get any bonus points. So all Crestview has to do is win and they get a top four seed to where they would host two games on that beautiful new turf at Crestview. Carey sitting right behind them at number three. They are eight and one. Same situation. If they can win and get a little bit of help with some bonus points, which they should because they have defeated every uh, Northern 10 squad that they played. They're playing each other, so they should get some bonus out of there. If Galleon can get a victory as well, that's that's a non-conference bonus for them from Division 4, some points. And if Toledo wait, a Division 2 squad could get a victory. They're 3-4 and four right now, so it's doable. They would be able to jump and get those two secondary bonus points. Moving down to Western Reserve, their season is complete. They're at 6-3. and three. They're not going to play this week, even though they had the opportunity to due to New London dropping to eight-man football. They sit right now in that number eight spot, but what hurts for them is the fact that they only sit on bonus points right now. And there's Colonel Crawford sitting in nine, that if they can defeat a 6-3 and three Seneca East squad, they're going to get some bonus points that could vault them ahead of Western Reserve, who right now, their average will probably move up a little bit, but the average in Colonel Crawford with the win and some bonus points will jump them into the top eight and then everybody else behind them. So it might be, right now it's looking Western Reserve would host Colonel Crawford in the first round, but with a Colonel Crawford win and a little bit of help, they would jump to the eight spot and Western Reserve would jump to nine and we would they would host them as well. And then you have Seneca East sitting at 11. They play Colonel Crawford. Right now, Seneca East, they're in. But it's a matter of can they jump up ahead of Colonel Crawford or not. That's the thing. Colonel Crawford would not host. They might drop down to 10. Seneca East could move up a couple spots. They won't host a home game. However, they could get a be uh, better seating if they can defeat the Eagles. And Brian, if you're still there, I'm going to try and do something for you here. Give me one second, folks. Hope everybody is having a wonderful Wednesday evening. Halfway to the weekend, halfway to week number 10. I can't believe... Uh, somebody once told me this is the fastest 10 weeks of the year, and they're right. But we get extra games this year due to the fact that we're playing an extra week in the playoffs. Anyway, 
back to the playoff ratings. Other than Seneca East, Colonel Crawford, Western Reserve, and Crestview, that should be it. Bucyrus, they have an outside, outside, outside chance. They are not eliminated yet. They have to beat Upper Sandusky and have a ton of things happen. But right now, according to Joe Idle, and let me make this known once again, Joe Idle is going off, you know, everything that he can do, but because of COVID, things getting canceled, it may change. But as of right now, Bucyrus still has an outside shot. Maybe an outside shot. They're not done yet, so you're saying there's a chance, but they still need a lot to happen. They'll probably need the teams behind them to lose, and they're going to need the teams ahead of them to lose as well to maybe jump in, but they may end up playing a carry in the first round anyway. Moving on to Region 23, and somebody requested Centerburg, and for, well, there they are. The Trojans, the big win, the upset victory at Northmore has them in the ninth position right now. They take on Fredericktown. The Freddie Berg Trophy, the new Freddie Berg Trophy, will be unveiled on Friday night. Who gets it? Well, that's going to help them out because Centerburg, with a win, would get them possibly into the eighth spot. If they get a win and they get a little bit of help, if Nelsonville York, who is sitting in eighth right now, they play a three and six Athens squad, a Division three Athens squad, however, if they can get the win over them, Nelsonville York would then, with their bon with their bonus points and everything, it's looking like Centerburg could jump them into the eighth spot and get a home game. Other than that, I don't see them moving up any further, unless uh, Sims Valley. They take on a 5-4 and four Northwest squad out of Division 5. If they lose and everybody that they have defeated loses as well so they don't get secondary points, they might drop just underneath Centerburg. But Centerburg needs the win first. They need to knock off Fredericktown in the rivalry matchup. That would possibly assure them a home game. We'll see. As for Fredericktown, they control their own destiny right now. If they knock off Centerburg, they would be in. If they lose, however, they would need help once again. There's a couple of teams. Elgin wouldn't be able to catch them. Grandview Heights could if they get everything, if everything goes right for them. But there's two teams below, Shenandoah and Rock Hill. Both of those teams play higher rated squads that could jump them up just average wise if Fredericktown were to fall. If Fredericktown wins, they're in. If they lose, they're going to need help from a few teams below them. Buckeye Trail, Elgin, Grandview Heights, and Shenandoah. Those are the four teams to look at for that. As for Northmore, the Golden Knights, despite losing to Centerburg, they did not drop at all in the rank rankings. They did not drop out of the top four. So right now, they've locked up a first-round home game at the Castle. Tammy also, I'll go back real quick. Tammy asked, is Clear Fork in? Clear Fork is in. It's just a matter of where they're going to be seated now. According to Joe Idle, which I trust, and despite everything else, it may it may change if other teams lose games due to COVID and everything like that. But as of right now, if things work out, everybody plays, Clear Fork will be in, Shelby is in. And if Clear Fork wins, there's an outside chance of getting one game at the Colt Corral. If Shelby wins, they get a game, one more game at WW Skiles Field. Now back here to Region 23, Northmore. They've locked up one game at the Castle. If they can knock off Highland for their first conference championship, or at least co-conference championships in 1982, 39 years, they'll get a lot of bonus points out of that by defeating a higher-ranked squad, a Division Four squad. And then if they get a little help from some conference opponents... They should be able to keep that number four spot and play two games at the castle. It depends. I think with help, I think Northmore will be able to do it if they can pull off the victory, but they have a tough test. Dane Nam and the number one rusher in the area going up against Max Lauer, the number four rusher in the area. But right now, with the win, that should get them up to around 20 in average. 
and there's only, I believe, one other team, two other teams that may be able to pass them up. Afrocentric, who sits in sixth right now, they play a 5-3 and three Eastmore Academy squad on the road who's from Division Three. That's a lot of bonus points for them. The Barnesville Shamrocks, they're at 5-3. and three. They had the Union Local, a Division Four squad. So those are two teams that could possibly jump Northmore with a win and help. But if the Golden Knights can take care of business and get a little bit of help from some squads, preferably these non-conference teams in Seneca East, South Central, Bucyrus, so say you get a victory from uh, Seneca East upset of Colonel Crawford, that's, that's bonus points for them. South Central, if they can get their final victory over Plymouth, a 4-4 four and four Plymouth squad, they could get in. Bucyrus, Bucyrus will need that major victory. They're going to take on Upper Sandusky if they can get that as well. These bonus points are kind of, it's confusing to most people what these bonus points can do, but at the same time, it's it's what helps. I mean, it's tough to add everything up and whatnot, but right now it's looking like Northmore win and a little bit of help from some of the teams you defeated, and you're going to get those two home games unless something crazy happens where a couple teams behind them get some upsets and move ahead of them. But right now, Northmore, you're in, and you have at least one home game, maybe two. It's it's still up for grabs. All right, now that we have that done, let's move to Division 7. And first, we'll go to Region 27 and the East Knox Bulldogs. They are in fourth right now. They're huge upset of Highland that keep them not only in position for a top four playoff rating, but also gets them right back into the KMAC championship conversation because of Centerverd's upset of Northmore and then them defeating the other undefeated in the conference, Highland. They now have one loss if they win in the Devil Dog game against Danville and either Northmore or Highland win. They'll be co-KMAC champions, but right now they sit in fourth. They take on a Danville squad that's that's been playing better as of late. Danville sitting in 12th. They, like, they control their own destiny right now, but for the Bulldogs, a win and a little bit of help from some teams that he, they defeated would keep them in that fourth spot. If they win and nobody helps them out, then they might drop a couple spots because Trimble sitting in fifth, they're done. But if they, once again, it's those secondary points. Waterford, they take on a 2-7 and seven Bell Pre squad out of Division 6. So that would boost up their average a little bit. But as of right now, East Knox, the only team you're going to have to look for with a victory is the teams that Trimble has defeated. A Nelsonville, York, Miller, Waterford, South Gaella, Bell Pre, and Southern. Those are teams that they defeated, and if those teams win, they get secondary points, which would give them enough to jump. But I think right now, East Knox, if you win, you are getting two home games in Howard, which, you know that atmosphere with all the horns, the, the truck horns and everything like that. It's a great atmosphere to play football, and that's where East Knox went to a regional quarterfinal last year with that extended playoffs. Now moving down to Danville. Right now they're sitting in 12th. They knock off East Knox, they're in. It's all you do. It's you win and you're in. You have that would give them more average than 17th and down could get with a win. So they would be in. Now with a loss, they would need some help because their loss would get their average around 5.5. And teams 7, 17, 18, 19, Eastern, who's sitting at three and four, they beat a Southern team. They could move up ahead of Danville. The Bridgeport Bulldogs, they could have a chance. Eastern and Southern actually play each other. So looking at it right now, those two teams will play each other. That would move them up a little bit. But Danville's not out of it if they lose. That's what I should be saying. Danville's not out of it if they lose. However, a win automatically puts them in. And they don't, you guys don't have to worry about it for Saturday when we get the brackets out and everything like that. But as of right now, Danville, you win, you're in. East Knox, you win. 
you get two home games at Chet Looney Stadium, which helps, which is huge right now. I don't think East Knox a win. If the top three win ahead of you, I don't think you would move, which would set up a regional semifinal at Newark Catholic, the top seed right now. But if somehow Burn Union, they take on Fisher Catholic, that would give them some bonus points. But if Fisher Catholic can get a, get an upset there, you move up. It would be a regional semifinal in round three against Shady Side, the team that you guys saw last year at home that knocked you out of the playoffs 14 to nothing. So maybe maybe a rematch coming there. We'll have to see the Shady Side Tigers. They play Monroe Central, who's down in the standings a little bit lower. These are teams, that's another thing looking at for Danville. If you win, Monroe Central and Fisher Catholic play the top two teams in the region right now. Those teams lose, and Danville could move up closer, but they won't. They'd be flirting with a home game, but I think they could only top out at number nine. So kind of stinks, but at least gets your seating up there a little bit more. So it's favorable for Danville, and it's also favorable for East Knox if we can get an upset or two out of that. Taking a look now at D7 Region 25, a lot of our area teams here from the Firelands Conference, as well as the Lucas Cubs. So we take a look at that. St. Paul, pretty much they have a top four seed locked up. Even with a loss, they could still top out at about 20, an average 20, which would still put them maybe even in second place. Now the Lucas Cubs, they have a huge one at Mogador. Mogador 7-2 and two in Division 6. This is a game that we've been hyping up for the last couple of weeks. If Lucas can pull off the upset, they will finish first in the region. Doesn't even matter if St. Paul wins because the average is a little bit higher. I think Lucas would get the top spot, St. Paul, and then would flip-flop, which could be big depending on how Independence, Dalton, Cuyahoga Heights, Southern, JFK finish below them. So right now, Lucas and St. Paul still fighting for that number one spot, thanks to Crestview last week knocking off St. Paul. That opened it up because if St. Paul would have defeated Crestview, that would have locked up the top seed for St. Paul. Now they're in a dogfight for that top spot with the Lucas Cubs. Moving down a little bit further, Plymouth. Right now, it's looking like you're in. Congratulations to the Plymouth Big Red on making it back to the postseason. They've done enough so far that their average would stay with a win between 10, and even with a loss, they would stay around 7.5, which would give, which isn't enough for the 17th team, which is Steubenville Catholic Central. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have a spot to make it above them. So Plymouth, right now, if Everybody plays their games. Doesn't matter you guys are in, but you know you guys want to get a victory over South Central to get your playoff positioning a little bit higher, which could be anywhere between 11.1 and 9 points. And actually, with a little help, yep, it would only get to 9. So right now, Plymouth, you're in. You're not going to be hosting a first-round game, but you are in for now. Speaking of South Central, you're sitting in 15th right now. You control your own destiny. You as well as Monroe. This is it's a funny thing right now in the in the Firelands. Mapleton's at 14. South Central's at 15. Monroeville is at 16. That's because uh, Wyndham opted out, so things moved up. On Monday, Monroeville was sitting at 17th, but now because Wyndham opted that opted out, we have three Firelands teams finishing out the top. 16 and all three if they win would be in it they wouldn't need any help or anything like that if they were to fall we'll start with mapleton they would finish somewhere between five points and 6.4 points studentville catholic central 6.8 and 6 so it would be close for south central you get some points if you defeat Plymouth. You get those bonus points that could vault you up right now between 6.9 and 8 points. Not going to move up if teams ahead of you win, but it would get you into the playoffs. As for Monroeville, you're taking on St. Paul. I mean, if you can get the upset of St. Paul, you're going to vault up somewhat, but you're in. 
So those three teams right now, South Central, Monroeville, Mapleton, when you're in, Plymouth, you're already in, but if you want to you know, move up a little bit more, get a little bit fa more favorable playoff position, get the victory, and then Lucas and St. Paul also fighting for a spot at the top. Also want to talk about, real quick, Winford. The Royals, right now sitting in 14th. They're going to need help even if they win right now. A win would put them between 8.1 and 7.1. Now, the two teams below them, Waynedale and Northwestern, a win would put them right up there, maybe past Winford. But the team that controls their own destiny outside of the top 16 is 17th Oak Harbor. Oak Harbor takes on Port Clinton, who is 8-1 in Division 4, Region 14. If Oak Harbor pulls off the major upset, they are in, and they bump everybody down one. So Winford is looking for Oak Harbor to lose, and they would need to knock off Mohawk to get into the playoffs. But right now, Winford's sitting in 14th. They would need a victory and a little bit of help to get in, but right now it's looking like if things are chalk, if things stay the way they should, Winford, the Royals, back in the postseason, and with a win, they'd stay at 500. And Mohawk, let's go to Region 26 out of Division 7. The Warriors right now control their own destiny. They're sitting in 12th, 7.2 average. But there are a couple teams outside of the top 16 that could make it in with a win and some help. Pandora, Gilboa, they take on Corey Ross in an 0-8 squad. They're going to get, unless a major upset, they will get the win and they'll move up. Tiffin Calvert sitting in 18th, a team that they defeated. Calvert wins, they get the bonus points, but they're t playing a 6-3 Division 5 Lakota squad. That could get them up ahead of the Warriors. We'll just have to wait and see, but right now it's looking like Mohawk. A win and nothing crazy happens. You're in no matter what. A loss, you're going to have to wait it out a little bit, depending on what those teams just outside of the top seven, uh, 16. There's only three teams that are still in it outside of the top 16. It's Calvert, St. John's, and Pandora Gilboa. Arlington, who's sitting in 16th. They play North Baltimore, 3-5 and five squad. So it's favorable for them. Spencerville, they play a 3-6 and six Jefferson. That Spencerville team is in 15th. Harder Northern, they take on Waynesfield Goshen. So that's, Goshen is a 7-2 and two squad. So that might be helpful for the Mohawk Warriors. If they lose, they would drop down. But right now, as every team here, you win you have a good chance of getting in. Uh, Corey, yeah, let's take a look at Highland, the Scots. Right now, you know, big game against Northmore coming up on Friday. I will be there on the call, live and free right here on the OH Report. But let's take a look at the Highland Scots in Region 15, Division 4. Highland right now sitting in 10th. As of right now, they haven't officially locked up a playoff spot despite being 6-3. and three. They control their own destiny. You defeat Northmore, you get in. If they win and everybody else ahead of them wins, they're not going to be able to move up. They won't move up, so they won't get a home game at Highland. However, if they somehow, if they fall to the Golden Knights, their average would be between 11.3 and 12.3, 11 which would get them... I think they're. I think they would be in. I, they're really. They're right on that line right now. Looking here, there's a couple teams outside of the top 16 that, with a win, could jump Highland. But Highland's so far up in the ratings right now. They're 10th. Something completely drastic would have to happen. A lot of upsets would have to happen for them to get knocked out. So Highland right now feeling pretty good. I mean, if if the Scots get the win, they're in and they will be locked at either 9 or 10 just outside of that top 8 Cambridge is the team that you have to look for as well if Cambridge 
loses, there might be a chance that Highland gets in through the back door just because of secondary points. So let me take that back. As they play St. Clairsville, the Red Devils a pretty good team year in and year out. They're 8-1 and one right now. So if Cambridge falls, Cambridge, Landon, McKinley both fall, there might be a chance that Highland gets that number 8 spot. So we'll have to see, but winning you're in, and maybe you get that number 8 spot, but you need a couple teams to lose. If you lose, you're probably still going to be in. You might drop a couple spots. But right now the Highland Scots, great season for you guys heading into you know your final KMAC game ever before going to the MOAC, you guys should be in. Um, other than that, uh, everybody else, anybody else have any questions here? I know I appreciate everybody. Uh, Paul, Sean, Gary, Benjamin, Aaron, Brian, Tammy, Aaron, and Cody. Appreciate everybody's comments right here. Try to get Brian in. Apologize for that. Our, our call wasn't working at the moment. But that's what, I mean, That's I guess that's what we get for throwing this together last minute. I wanted to let you guys know how everything was looking. So we'll take, we'll, we'll review everything one final time real quick right here. Mansfield Senior right now. They're sitting pretty. They get a win. And Padua Franciscan doesn't get a ton of level two help. Mansfield Senior should be playing two games at Arlen Field. West Holmes, let me mention West Holmes as well. Great season for them. They have a chance of finally going 10-0 to clinch an outright OCC championship. They've done enough. They're the two seed. If somehow Norton, an 8-0 squad, were to fall to field, field is 1-7, a Division Four squad, not looking favorable. But West Holmes has locked up the number two seed. They will be the number two seed no matter what. Norton probably going to be the number one, but there's an outside chance. You never know what could happen. They could be the number one squad. But right now, they're going to be number two, which sets up a regional semifinal right at the moment, maybe with Mansfield Sr., unless Buckeye or Rocky River, the winner of that, jumps Mansfield Sr., then you would see that maybe in a regional final. Moving down to River Valley. River Valley, another one of those teams that's sitting right on the edge of making it into the playoffs without a win. Beat Lexington, you're in for sure. You lose, you're going to be waiting it out a little bit, but I still think River Valley is going to make it. Ashland and Lexington. Must win games for both squads. I could see where Revere and Copley both lose. And Lexington and Ashland both squeak in, which would be something because one of those two teams would probably get West Holmes in the first round of the playoffs. You never know. They've seen them once. It's the playoffs. You never know, like I just said. So Ashland and Lexington, it's crazy. These two teams started off on a bad note. Losing streak to start the season for Ashton. Lexington had a win against Ontario, then went on a losing streak, but they picked it up as of late, and both teams still have a chance of making it to Week 11. Great for both of those squads. Region 4, Region 14, Division 4. Like I said, Shelby Clearfork, that game, whip its win. They're going to be playing at Skiles Field. Clearfork wins. They're going to need, they're going to need some help to get ahead of Perkins. And then Lutheran West, but we'll have to see. But right now, Shelby for sure, a win gets them in. Clear Fork, a win and a little bit of help might get you into that eighth spot in a home game at the Valley. But both those teams right now, you guys are in. Congratulations, back in the postseason. Great, unless something crazy happens where there's some, there's some cancellations. But as of right now, it's looking like both teams are in for sure. Galleon, going to need a win and some help to get in there just because of bonus points. You're not going to get a lot of help from that. You're going to finish it t between 9 and 10.9 with three teams behind you. Here on Edison Firelands, that has the opportunity of jumping you as well as Brian. So still get a win first, get the 5-5, five and five, and then you're going to have to wait and see what other scores are for the night. But as of right now, Galleon's sitting in 14th. Moving on now to D6 Region 22, Crestview, St. Uh, Crestview, that big win against St. Paul. That's pretty much got you locked in. Going to get a top four spot. Just depends on where you guys are going to be in that top four. You get the win. Finish out the undefeated season against Mapleton. Then you just have to see what, what your uh, opponents that you defeated do 
to make sure where you're going to be at. But right now, Crestview's going to get two games at home. Carry, they get a win. They will be in the top four as well. Western Reserve, they just have to wait. If Colonel Crawford gets a win, it's looking like Colonel Crawford would host Western Reserve unless something ahead of them happens. But right now, Crawford and Western Reserve, you're both in. Just depends on who gets the home game. And then Seneca East, you guys are in as well. And not going to be hosting a home game, but it just depends if he can move up a couple spots to get better playoff positioning. Region 23, Northmore Golden Knights win and hope a couple teams behind you don't get any upsets and you're going to be playing two games at the Castle. Centerburg, a win, might get you that home game for round one. You won't be able to get two home games, but one home game will give you, you know, if a win against Fredericktown, who's also playing, win and they're in, lost, they're going to have to wait out a little bit to see where they fall. That's all, like I said before, like I've said many times tonight, bonus points. That's secondary points. It's teams that you defeat. If they can get the more wins that your opponents that you defeat get, the more bonus points you get. So right now, Fredericktown looking like they're going to get in even with a loss. But hey, just get the win. Get the first victory with the Freddie Berg Trophy. You guys will be in. Centerburg already in. Northmore a win against Highland gets you to the top four. D7, Region 27, East Knox. Looks like you're going to be top four with a win over Danville in the in the Devil Dog game. Two home games. Just depends on positioning. If Danville pulls off the victory, they wouldn't move up into the top eight, but they would get close to it, I believe. Like I said, once again, depending on all those bonus points, but right now, so East Knox, Danville, it's about positioning. East Knox is in for sure. They have a home game for sure. Can they get two? We'll see. Danville, most likely going to get in. Just depends on a couple teams below. Upsets, anything like that happens, you know, we'll have to wait and see. And then finally, once again, in D7, Region 25, St. Paul and Lucas, both Getting two home games, it just depends on who's going to be one, who's going to be two. Plymouth, you're in as well. And then Mapleton, South Central, Monroeville, all three of you get victories. You guys will also be in. However, like I said, Mapleton and Monroeville play St. Paul and Crestview, so it's tough tasks for them. Losses would make things very interesting because Steubenville Catholic Central, all they have to do is win and win either Monroeville, South Central, or Mapleton lose, and they will jump them. So all three squads rooting for Steubenville Catholic Central to fall to 4-5 and five Toronto. It's possible Toronto sits 13th also. So we'll have to wait and see for that. And then, like I said, with Winford and Mohawk, win and you're in. If not, you're in a half to wait. So that's enough of me mumbling right now. I hope you guys have somewhat of an idea of now what's going to happen. I will try and break things down more for you on the Friday Night Pigskin, Friday night 1130, on our Facebook and YouTube channels right here on the OH Report. I will try and break things down after some of the scores are in, you know, make sure we see if any of these fringe teams do make it. But right now, let's take a look at the lineup for this Friday night, what we have, we have a highlight, that Centerburg Fredericktown matchup for the Freddie Berg Trophy. We have a highlight of that, and we'll show you that on the pigskin. Another one, the MOAC de facto championship game. Shelby wins, they get it outright. Clear Fork wins, they get a co-championship with the Whippets. Those two squads also playing for possibly a home playoff game. Live, the Devil Dog game at Danville. East Knox, Danville playing for positioning. Danville playing to get in. East Knox, like I said, playing for a top four spot in two home games. Another highlight, those Galleon Tigers win and wait. If they lose, they're going to be really on edge about that. But if Galleon can knock off Pleasant, then they're looking a little bit better and just need a couple things to happen to get into the top 16. 
I will be at Northmore with Andy Jardy. Northmore Highland, the KMAC Championship winner gets the KMAC, possibly shares it with East Knox if they win, and gets playoff positioning. Both teams already in. Northmore gets that home game. Highland, they need to win and a little bit of help to get a home game. So we will see Northmore looking for their first conference championship since 1982. Highland just did it a couple years ago when they defeated Northmore in a battle of undefeateds 9-0 and in Week 10. Another highlight, Lucas at Mogador. This is big for the Cubs. Can they get the top seed in the region? Lucas already locked up a top four seed. Bob Winefield's going to be rocking for the first two games of the playoffs. But can they defeat Mogador and get some much, well, not much needed because they always have it, but some big momentum going into playoff time. We will see that Friday night. And the city game. Another one, Mansfield Senior, it's looking like you're going to get a top four seed unless some crazy things happen. You might crazy things happen. You might drop the fifth right now. Take care of business. All they have to do is take care of business, get a little payback for the Madison Rams from what they did last year, and you should be fine. Madison, looking for their first win of the season. We'll have to see. Can they ride the momentum of last year's win? You'll see that live and free on Friday night. Another live game, Ashland and Worcester. This is big for the Arrows. If you knock off Worcester, you can get in to the postseason. And after the craziness that happened last year in that game, it could happen. Another hot highlight, a play-in game for Winford and Mohawk. Winner gets in. The other one, they're going to be waiting it out once again. And that will do it. So thanks, everybody, for watching this. Hopefully you have an idea of what's going on. I know I talked a lot, gave you a lot of numbers and whatnot, but uh, yeah, you know my, as usual, any questions, hit me up on Twitter or on Facebook. There's my Twitter handle right there, at TBerardi underscore. Uh, any more playoff questions in the next couple of days, I will be glad to answer them for you. But for now, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. We have two uh, volleyball.